the way the mind works, we have two systems. They're not literally two systems in the brain, but it's really how the mind works. One system is what Malcolm Gladwell would call fast, quick, automatic, intuitive, emotional. They're both working in parallel, system one and system two. But because system one is fast, it gives you an answer faster than system two can give you. System two has to do a little bit of math. System one doesn't do anything. It just looks at it and says, okay, I like it, I don't like it. So it's like if you're listening to me, you have a system one reaction. I like it, I don't like it. System two is, oh, let me listen to the arguments, the content. Is it interesting? How do I use it? That's system two. But system one has already generated an answer for you. So here's an example that I like. Uh, one of my colleagues, Shane, gave it to me. He says, which one of them is likely to be a mass murderer? <laughs> you probably already have the answer in your mind, and I hope it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Most people judge the person in the middle, yeah. Who happens to be a chair professor at Caltech, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Colin Cameron, one of our beloved colleagues. And, but the idea is your mind kind of just uses it and says, yeah, this guy, I can see, he can do, he might have done it, right? And so the system one gives you a very quick response, and the system two might now kick in and say, like, you know, should I judge by the face? No, and say, I don't really know, so let's just go with them that anyway. So that's how system one works. System two, on the other hand, system one always doesn't give an answer. So if you look at this, unless you're an M watching MTV, where sometimes when you ask what's 17 times 24, they say 37, as if it's a guessing game. <laughs> but typically, you can't answer this question. You really can't answer this question until you actually have to do the math. Most of us can. So when system one doesn't give an answer, the lazy system two will put in the effort. If system one gives a plausible answer, system two kind of doesn't, it goes with it. I said both systems one and two are working, but system two stops working when you're multitasking. So if you're multitasking right now, you're responding to an email, you're thinking about your meeting, or you're driving and you're speaking on the phone, the multitasking makes you focus much more on system one. A question that interests me, and I haven't seen much data on this, I've talked to Nielsen a lot, to IRI as well, how do people shop when they're tired? You hear all the time, 80% of people are tired. We get people shopping baskets and ask them to remember an eight-digit number or a three-digit number. It's much harder to remember an eight-digit number, which means your system two is kind of occupied. We occupied your working memory, so as you might imagine, we find that under this high cognitive load, people's basket sizes were much larger. So they were kind of buying much more habitually as opposed to thinking, do I need this? Do I want this? When will I use it kind of thing? The last, this, uh, this is the last one and I'll stop uh, because it's an important concept is the psychological distance. The idea of psychological distance is when people look at something cognitively, they look at different things when it's close to you, when you look through a microscope, or when you look through a telescope, when it's far from you. So what I, when, when MSI, which is a smart thing to do, when anyone invites you to give a talk many, many months before this, you think about why would you want to give the talk? It's an interesting audience, you know, learning experience, it'll be fun. But if they had invited me last week, I would think how far is Boston? What else do I have to do? As a, you ask different sets of questions. Similarly, consumers ask different questions when they are in the shopping aisle do I buy this product versus when they watch an ad on TV?